hip hop, the cultural juggernaut that has swept the globe. Its influences can be found in the world of fashion, design, art, dance, and even politics. Arguably though, no other medium has been more affected by hip hop than the world of music. Rapping has spread like wildfire through every region of the country, and each area has battled to put their town on the map. Cities like Chicago, Atlanta, Los Angeles, New York, Miami, and Houston have all left their stamp on the hip-hop passport. Each of those cities has spawned several different superstars of rap and cemented their city's place in the hip-hop world. Even with global attention that rap receives, there are several places that have yet to produce a major commercial artist. Places where local MCs are still rocking small crowds in dimly lit bars, honing their craft. Places that have their own local legends that have learned how to survive in an underdeveloped market. Places where artists are still fighting and battling for their chance to be heard. Places like Austin, Texas. Austin has a rich music history which stretches back to the late 1800s to the German beer gardens and halls, some of which still stand to this day, such as Scholl's Beer Garden. Throughout the 1900s, Austin's music culture continued to grow and it birthed and helped to make legends out of such acts as Willie Nelson, Janis Joplin, and the fabulous Thunderbirds. When the hip-hop culture exploded out of New York City in the late 1970s, it didn't take long for it to make its way down south to the live music capital of the world. And in the mid to late 80s, it saw an emergence of Austin's first hip-hop artists. I would say that the first local rappers that I'd heard of was probably um, Nook Casino. They're considered ATX legends. We went out for some food girls. That was a big deal back in like early 90s. It was Babu Blake's, for sure. This is like MC Overlord. He appealed to everybody. Like, everybody I knew had either heard of him or heard his music, you know? MC Fatals, you know what I'm saying? Like the MC Overlord. MC Overlord. Um, the first ATX rapper I ever heard of was MC Overlord. The entertainment district down there was 6th Street at the time, so if you had a venue that was on 5th or on 7th, you know, there was, there, I can't even remember the name of them, the Planetarium or something like that. There were these, these venues that would take a shot on an off night, you know, because it was a bonus for them to get a bunch of kids in there, you know, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, you know, on a revenue night that, that wasn't generating any money for them normally. It was a bonus for them. So they would let us do our thing, pretty much have free run of the place. There was never any problems, man. And that, you know, I think that kind of started the beginning of easing the tensions of people believing that, you know, hip hop was going to be some kind of problematic thing uh, as far as letting us perform live. I think the first Austin rap I know about uh, was Fatal. I don't know if she's Fatal. I had this fucking tape. Uh, the first one he put out with, with, uh, with his brother and that Tiger and shit on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was fucking um, doing Nook concerts and shit with a uh, little basketball team. In like 96 and shit. And just concerts at Doris Miller and shit. So, yeah, I've been around it for a long time. I'm fucking for, for the, the female group, Fo Show and all them. Like back in the day, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna raise so yeah, they remember all that shit in Austin. Man. Me, I would have to say it was it was Nook, cause I'm not originally from Austin, but I've been in Austin a good portion of my life. Um, came here September of '97, so when I got here, a lot of the, I mean, of course, a lot of the rap that I was hearing at first was like Houston rap. Saying. But as far as somebody locally, like putting off for the city, Nook was like really the first person I heard about. Him and like uh, MC Fatal, those were like the first two. And then really, Smack Ola also, because I used to see a lot of his posters around the city when he first got down with Roy Jones. 
Um, uh, I think it was a uh, was it Body Head Entertainment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I used to see a lot of his posters around town. So like, as far as Austin Cats, those are like the first ones that I really know about myself. Hmm. The first ATX rapper I ever heard. Damn, that is a real good question. I would have to say, um, the fellas. The fellas, um, a guy by the name of Curtis, um, was doing his thing back back at our church. I was probably like seven, six or seven years old. So I really looked up to like Curtis and Elton. They had a group on the south side of Austin called the fellas, and that's they really inspired me to kind of do my thing. ATX, I would have to say Cool Whip. Cool Whip or nothing. Yeah, probably like Cool Whip or nothing. Yeah, that was probably back like in the early 90s. Yeah, it was pretty Yeah, yeah they I'm saying Houston boys, man. Michael Blackface, y'all remember that? I'm going to keep it all the way pimp, and I'm not from Austin, I'm from Dallas, so the first cat that I heard of out of Austin was that cat right okay. there, Casino, so I'm just going to be real with you. Shoot, I think um, one, of my, one of my earliest ones I remember was a group called Simply Mackin, I remember them, and then um, one, of the, one of the first ones I heard on Austin radio was Lil Black. It was Hip Hop Hump Day. Uh, uh, like a week after I got into Austin, um, I went to Bob Marley Fest, when it was still called Bob Marley Fest, and um, I saw Hip Hop Pump Day and that bike. I was like, oh shit, this is really cool. Austin has always been a great place for artists to come and perform. As Austin's official slogan is the live music capital of the world, the city has a vibrant live music scene with more music venues per capita than any other U.S. city. It is no wonder that so many shows, tours, and festivals come through the city every year. Austin MCs are not only mean on the mic, but have honed stagemanship skills to new heights. You know, you can't kill a local artist. You know, some of these people nowadays are outrageous. Thousand dollars for a spot on the front, fifteen minute slot on a zero show. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. 150 bucks, maybe 100 bucks, you know what I'm saying, maybe, or whatever the whatever the case may be, man. Stop trying to stain, you know what I'm saying? Like, promoters need to stop trying to stain and trying to stop trying to be greedy, you know what I'm saying? Stop trying to be greedy. It's actually killing the game. I mean, I put it like this if you're a promoter, promote. If you're a manager, manage. If you're a rapper, rap. But I'm not gonna make all of your dollars for you to guarantee your artist. Um, we recently did a show like that, to where, you know what I'm saying? It was it was it was a while ago, but it was a situation to where, of course, tickets were involved and this and that. But even with all these other artists that paid, you know what I mean? We didn't pay, but I seen a lot of other artists paid, and they did not get their money back. They're just and, and that cutting makes our own sense. throats, man. I mean, you you are murdering a scene that was not easy to build. Maybe a couple thousand dollars. You are doing hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage to a business, you know, for people who are trying to build a business here, who are trying to protect an industry. And these are opportunistic cats that are not, don't, don't, don't think any of these cats are about hip hop. They're not about the culture. It, it depends on who the artist is, man. It, the artists have the option to do it. Um, I've done it before. Uh, you know, I made a big statement about it after the American Statesman hit me up about it. I got on Facebook and had to tell my side. Um, now that I've grown and I've seen what it's about and I've done legitimate shows where I was paid to perform, I don't think pay to play is an option for me. I don't think pay to play is an issue um, when it's sort of a willfully ignorant type um, artist or management or team or whatever you want to call it because if it's a situation where you're paying for a certain opportunity and you can manage those expectations and you can negotiate that opportunity, there will never be a problem. The problem I see with artists doing that, if you give someone 500 bucks for a form and they do another show, do you think they're gonna let you go on that one for free? Bullshit, straight up, you know what I'm saying? If it takes a promoter that you got to have the artist to come out here to, to pay money for them to get on, man, that's bullshit, that means you're not a real promoter. That means that you can't get out here and you can't get the people to come in to pay it. 
the, the ticket at the door. You know what I'm saying? That that's what it's all about. It's not about pay to play. It's about you paying them. You the talent. You know what I'm saying? If you put a uh, five local artists on, you should pay them five local artists for them getting up there and doing their time. Four groups from Austin got together. And we said, all right, let's put our money in. Why would we pay a promoter when we could put the money in a pot to have a super devastating show? It's not pay to play, it's grind to win. Okay, what I think about pay to play, and this is really important because I did an interview with the Austin American Statesman, Statesman about this. First of all, I've learned by being an artist, it wasn't enough. I had to learn how to become a businessman. I had to learn how to operate a business and anybody that operates a business understands that it costs to run your business you have to pay for marketing promotion everything you do as far as your business there is a cost incurred in order for you to get the product or have the exposure to let people know about your product so when it comes to pay to play my stance on it is i am adamantly against paying to play but I am all for an artist sponsoring and investing in their career. I, you know, that doesn't really have much to do with PR, in my opinion. Um, but I think that any situation uh, in which an artist could potentially be exploited uh, to spend money uh, for what may or not, may not be an empty promise is, um, is unfortunate. I hope that's not going on. Um, I'm excited to learn about it, but for the most part, uh, it's. I, I just hope that the promoters are treating artists with respect. <laughs> That's a good one right there, man. You know, politics. Since I'm not a rapper and that, you know, my opinion really don't count, but I'm just saying, I mean, it pay the cost to be the boss. If it work for you, if you gotta pay to get on, then I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do to get your name out there. It is what it is. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. That was not something that seriously affected us because honestly, if it was not good business, and it was not beneficial to our career individually or as a collective, it was not something that we did. And so regardless of what everybody's opinion is, not just us, anybody from Austin, everybody's responsible for their own personal career. Even if you have a manager, whatever the case may be, you know, everybody, you're a grown man at the end of the day, you're a grown woman at the end of the day, and you're responsible for your own. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you to decide, is it worth paying? It's as simple as that. Now you'd be a fool to pass up on a situation where it's great exposure, it's something that'll advance your career, further your buzz, and if they want you to pay to do that, then you should do that because that's investing in your career, which is necessary to take it to certain levels. Now if it's just, hey, we want you to pay, but it's not gonna be no crowd there, it's gonna be a few other artists, and the venue's gonna be dead, the sound system's gonna be crap, and that's just what it is. Then it's like, you know, that's when you get taken advantage of, and a lot of these artists are falling victim to that. But that's just from lack of knowledge. And, you know, I guess I was just blessed to come up, you know what I'm saying, to somebody that was smart enough to teach me better than that. Because I was always taught you just analyze each situation individually. And if it's not something that's beneficial, pass on. Austin has always had an independent streak. So it's no wonder that it has produced so many hometown heroes, from DJs to producers to promoters to rappers, the city has always supported its own and created its own legends. Up and comers, man. Oh, somebody pops out to me, I would have to see, man. The little A and B boys is hot, I like them. Uh, East 35, they've been out here doing big things. VIP, LOEGs, all those guys. Might be more like a, a Kid Jones or um, a DOS, a League of Extraordinary G, um, folks like that. Um, if you want to take it on more of like a regional type level, you know, like, uh, you know, you got the Southern Boy, Nook, you know, and just um, different people like that in town. Um, Max Frost, he's out here killing the game. You know. Street Supply, the boys is on fire. Little Miles, little Miles, man. His 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 wordplay man is is it's like unexplainable. Corey Kendrick's tank and the 
You got that. Shout out to the whole Austin Martin Lee. Shout out to the Austin Shout out to him. He working. He doing his thing. Shout out to Casino. His camp. Everybody over here, you know. Give me a TV. Um, I got to say the league. For one, because I DJ for all league extraordinary G's. LNS crew. Uh, Street Monopoly. He's 35. Uh, Die Slow. I mean, we got a gang. Uh, Gang of fuck. We got the league. Fuck with the league. Goes to the family. You know what I'm saying? Jay King. Jay King and Young Texas Dollar. You know what I'm saying? What's the frat house gang? You know, there's a lot of guys that are out here actually really doing shit. You got uh, Nina Ross, uh, K Paul, and uh, Pimpin. Pimpin' Pin. You know what I'm saying? They are. Lil Chris, man. Chiquita B. She's eating right now. I, I, I think she's very talented. I haven't heard of a female that really likes I like this. like her. There's this young dude. Uh, Sometimes people's perception of, of, of Austin hip hop is that it's, it's there's no talent, and that's not true. And there's lots of talent. So I think what we need to do is start highlighting the talent and supporting the talent that that's actually really doing things in, in Austin and really making moves on on a not only local but a national level. There's a lot of them, man. I say you know, I say 60% of this city is ready to blow. 40% um, still getting their feet wet. Um, you know, like. Austin has a lot of talent and that's what me and a lot of people are trying to do right now is bring that attention to Austin and show them like we're not just a bunch of underdogs man like there's so many people here that deserve to be on the radio deserve to be in the spotlight um, but the negative side of Austin is keeping people from looking at us like that they don't take us seriously um, if we can start making a big deal about ourselves whether it's my ATX we next show or DJs playing certain artists in the club or um, even on the radio, man. When we start making a big deal about our artists, that's when other cities and labels and stuff start looking at us like we a big deal. You know, they see the talent in us. But until somebody makes a big deal about these artists, they're gonna co be considered nothing, you know. Um, taking trips out of town and stuff like that is great. Uh, you know, like a lot of artists do shows, you know, in other cities, other states. And that's cool doing that footwork, but we still have to make a big deal about ourselves here at home for people to take us seriously. So, but yeah, man, there's a lot of talented artists in Austin, man. It's just all about getting that exposure out there. I'm the one to watch out for. Up and comer, legend, in between, have, I don't know. I'm the one to watch out for. Because um, I feel like I have something to offer. I feel like I have a lot of <clears throat> changes to make. And I feel like I'm the one that has to set an example and let people know that, you know, it's okay to put a little more thought and a little more time into your craft. It's your craft. Every word you say on that record, you know, every time you step in the booth, that's history that you make. And even when you're not on this earth, somebody's gonna be listening to that, hopefully. And what they hear needs to be your absolute best every single time. I feel like if I operate on that standard, then I feel like, you know, other, other artists should see that and they should, they should do the same for themselves. My favorite local DJ, um, just from fucking town and all that shit all the way. Oh, he ain't local because he don't live here no more, but fucking he'll have to have to with DJ LL, man. Man, man God, leave that. He went way, way back. Man, DJ LL. Man, LL, hey, if LL was spinning at a club, man, you knew that shit was going to be off the chain. My favorite local DJ, it's kind of hard because cause I cut for a lot of DJs, but if we're talking about history and time, I would definitely have to say DJ Crash. Um, Crash is like a brother to me. I grew up around him. Um, we used to perform together, do stuff, and Crash is one of the first DJs that actually took me under his wing. And that dude was like, uh, still is, you know, one of the liveest turntablists I've ever seen as far as the tricks, the scratching, the putting on a full show, and the full element of hip hop. As far as being a DJ, I would have to say, um, history and time, DJ Crash definitely is the top of my list. But there's a slew of other DJs here in Austin that I cut for, you know. But if I had to just go back my whole career and my whole time doing music, the person that sticks out the most is DJ Crash. My favorite local DJ, you know, for for a long time, uh, it, it was between DJ Knowledge and uh, JB, DJ Knowledge and JB was my go-to guys 
for anything. Uh, but as of late, within the past about a year, it's DJ D Best by far. Uh, on the tables, D Best is, to me, on the caliber of a DJ Jazzy Jeff. I don't care who agrees with me. I don't care who's laughing and saying, uh, why would you say Jeff? Only people that would say that are people who don't know about Jeff and know about the things that he's done. And they don't know about how he can cut up a record and make everybody stop what they're doing and pay complete attention to him. Um, the first time I heard D-Best was at Lucky Lounge. Um, it was him and another guy. I can't remember the other guy's name, but uh, and as he was DJing, and he was mixing, and he was spinning, and cutting, and breaking records, man. All I could do was stop and just, my mouth really, literally dropped, and I was like, yo, why is this nigga so good, yo? Like, why, why is his hands moving so fast? Like, why, why is this happening? Why, how come he can take this section of the song and just keep bringing it back? And not many other DJs in Austin can do that. And I came to a conclusion that he's the best one in Austin. So there's only a handful of DJs that I hire for any event that I throw. And the best, for the most part, is going to get that number one phone call. And that's no disrespect to anybody else. It's just I'm really a fan of the way that DJ D Best makes his records. And he's able to do it even when other people are performing. You know, some DJs will try it when people are performing and they'll completely mess up the guy's set. And the person that's performing has to turn around and be like, yo, hold on, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? I've seen D Best do that. He's done it for my sets. I've seen him, uh, he's done it for that boy Super Sets. Uh, and, and numerous other people. And he just adds a flavor, he adds, he adds a, a, a life to a set, per se, you know, and the guy's absolutely amazing. I know Kid Slice, and I'm trying to think of that guy who does it for the league, but I cannot think of his name. Oh, DJ JB. DJ JB. Local DJ. There was so many of them, man. Um, you got to Rapid Rick, DJ Griff. Um, Damn, it's just so many, but I would have to say one of the main ones, I mean, DJ Alex, Skills, but probably the one that put me in the game the most, I would have to say uh, DJ To The Q from uh, the Beat 104.3 back in the day. I mean, he put me in it, so I'd probably have to say To The Q. If you're going to hire a DJ, get DJ Grip, because he'll, if you hire him for a market that he's not even used to, he's going to go download all the music. He's going to find a top DJ, like the very, very top, and, and and do background check. And like, I think, you know what I'm saying, one of the best DJs, man, in Austin is DJ the D Best. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> also, shouts out uh, to Tizzle, DJ Don Tizzle, um, Hella Yellow, and all the other boys, man, that's out there doing it. LNS Crew DJs, DJ Charlie, he holds it down for us everywhere we go. If we in New York, if we in LA, wherever we are, DJ Charlie's here. So holds it down. And then got to shout out my boy Wes Sanders, DJ Knowledge, those my, my brothers. Shout out to uh, Hella Yellow, DJ Griff to spin your shit, DJ JB to spin your shit. It's some real DJs here. Uh, DJ Versus, uh, shout out to DJ Echo. Um, Lottie Dye and 2 Q been holding me down for a long time too, man. Um, you know, 2DQ used to play my songs in the club back in like 08. Corrupt, DJ Corrupt. I used to go uh, when the, uh, the uh, what was it called? I used to have this shit every Sunday. Red Fez. Red Fez, yeah, when the Red Fez opened. And he DJed there for like 10 years straight. This is before I knew Corrupt. Like now we're like friends or whatever. He DJs for the league uh, sometimes. But this is before, you know, and I didn't really, I didn't know him. I would just go down there and he would be jamming. Like, he would, a lot of times when you go to the club, they play club music, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Music that's specifically, supposedly designed to like make you jam in the club. But Corrupt would play everything. He'll play, you know, the original record that something was sampled from, and then he'll come back and play the song and just like, he, I, I remember many a nights being in there just, just vibing real, real hard. So, even though now he's my homeboy, I still have to say corrupt. I don't think that's a bias thing, because he's really good. Uh, uh, DJ Wallow, that's my DJ. Uh, DJ Nelson, he's cool. Uh, 
I just said Brimlow, JB, you know, uh, DJ, AC Cool. So it's, 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 it varies, you know, they, every DJ shows us love, so and they willing to work with us. Me personally, you know, I'm going to keep it in the fam. Um, go DJ JB, that's, that's, that's my baby cousin, he's doing his thing. He's working with, uh, he's an Armadale DJ, he, he's definitely getting it in. He's, uh, he also DJs times with uh, with Maybach Music. Besides him, um, I mean, it's, it's hard to say just a favorite because you got so many DJs in Austin, it's a big melting pot. But me personally, I'm, I'm going to send my cousin go DJ JB. He's, he's pretty... Pretty, he's pretty good with him. He, uh, he definitely knows how to mix. He takes it back to the old style of scratching, so he can definitely make a good mix for you. Home to South by Southwest, ACL, and the Texas Relays, it seems only a matter of time before Austin produces a major national or global hip hop act. But in a city dominated by country, folk, and rock music, it's been difficult for Austin rappers to get the media attention they feel they deserve. Not until recently in the 2000s have Austin rappers been regularly featured in media publications and blogs, let alone being on covers. With the new wave of artists emerging on the scene, though, work has been put in to change that, as Austin acts are starting to branch out and move around the country and spread their brand of hip hop. Stack as much money as you can. Yeah, you're going to need money, you know, to invest. And you know, first impression means everything. So get you some good shoes. Like they, you know yeah, saying? the first thing they're gonna look at when they meet you is your shoes. So <laughs> they talking, you know. <laughs> nah, but nah, but real nah, shit. Like really. you know, you gotta be able to invest in yourself. First impression means everything. Like when I'm at these festivals, A3C, CMJs, tables are full of CDs, and the ones that stand out with the best artwork are the first ones I pick up. You know, just take yourself you serious. Just take, just take your art serious. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, people only gonna take you as serious as you take yourself. If you don't, if you don't think, if you're not out there promoting an image that says I deserve to be paid for my art, then nobody's gonna pay you for your art. And, and understand that we all start in a position from ground zero. You know where no one knows who you are. You're not that good. You know you don't have any money. That's not what it's, it's about. It's about you having a passion and you having a love and a dedication and eventually, if it's meant to be, you'll get to that point, you know? But, you know, you can't expect someone to come knock on your door and be like, you're the next Jay-Z. Pay for your CDs, pay for your pay for your videos to get done, pay for your video, your, 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 your photo shoots, man, all that, man. Pay for it, man, just pay for it. If you want it, you'll pay for it. Or find somebody who believe in you that they, they, they'll go 50-50 with you, you know what I'm saying? So you can't, like expect, say, you can't like, expect to just pay for views on YouTube, but yeah. then you ain't, you ain't in the, you know, you not writing it and sharpening up your sword every day. You know what I'm saying? It's Definitely like, don't that, play free. There ain't no shortcuts in this game. Like people are gonna see through whatever the bullshit that you try to put up. If you're not really, if you're not really prepared for where you're supposed to be at, it's gonna sign through. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. gonna come through either way. Number one thing I tell them is to truly value or appreciate your career. It's very easy for someone to say they're doing it. It's very easily for, easy for someone to say they think they're good that they think they're grinding or whatever. But it's very uncommon for people to re retain a decent percentage of their fan base. They let them flow by and disappear. Because it's cooler to shake hands and drink drinks and do shots and whatever than it is to actually capture that information. Um, it's one of my biggest regrets. It's not a problem for me at this time, but in my personal experience, I do regret not always being consistent, really hardly being consistent in capturing that information. Because those people really gave you a chance and expressed the desire. But that's just not what you wanted to do. You didn't want to keep in touch with them. You wanted to do something else at that moment, consciously or otherwise. Um, I think that's the biggest flaw. Man, I bring a DJ that way because you want to, you know, interact with the crowd. You want to build a relationship with them, look them in the eye and, you know, and introduce these songs. You might have a crowd that, you know, a few people in the crowd that lost their jobs and you got a song about losing your job and they about to go get a drink, but you announce the song and they like, oh, I want to hear this, you know, because I can relate. The DJ that they you don't bring, they're just going to press play and take off. So you can't, you know, be counting on that DJ to pause it after each song to let you introduce those songs. 
that's why it's good to bring your own DJ. And when you make a decision to yourself, like, man, I want to do this shit for real. I don't want to be doing at the same level I'm at right now, 10 years from now. I want to be a professional. I want to get paid for this shit because I'm good enough to get paid. You got to get paid. You know what I'm saying? You got to do the just a hobby. And that's what I'm saying. If you salary. do your research, then it makes it easier on you. You know what I'm saying? You can go read a fucking book about somebody that already did what you're trying to do. And they can give it's you advice. There, you, you know what I'm saying? You can go make there. a friend, yeah. somebody that's trying to do what you're doing that's 10 years ahead of you. You know what I'm saying? And soak up game from a motherfucker. If you want to go learn how to mix, go pay somebody yeah, don't be to afraid, mix your shit yeah. and sit there with them and ask them fucking questions. Exactly. Don't time. be afraid you know to saying? admit go that learn, you need go help. Go invest in your craft. Yeah. But more than anything, like you said, you gotta get some money. Just keep working and try to get out of the city. You know, keep working. Try, drop a project. It don't work. Drop another one. That don't work. Drop another one. Oh, that one did work. Would you do different? Keep doing that. What that worked. Just keep dropping, and you're never gonna know how good you are unless you keep dropping and keep dropping and keep dropping, dropping, and you figure out what works. We have to support each other. You have to go to each other's shows. It don't matter if you think somebody's better than you or might not be as good as you. It's not really about that. If they are ATX and they're on stage and they're doing it and you're not doing anything that night, you should be at their show, you know? And likewise for them, when you're on stage, they should be at your show. Y'all should be in the lab together. You know, y'all should be having lunch. Y'all should be talking about how can we put on our own music festivals. ACL's not having you out. You know what I'm saying? You know, South by Southwest is not trying to have you be a part of their festival. How do we create something for us? We've done it before and we can do it again. You know what I'm saying? But it, it takes us uniting and being there for each other, man. And hear me clearly. I don't mean to disappoint none of y'all. There are no shortcuts, none. I don't care how much money you think you got. I don't care how easy you think it would be to shake hands with this dude and, 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 and cut, cut in line here. There are none, you know? You start here and you get here. That is the way it goes for every significant artist in the game, period. With an ever-growing pool of talent, we have only hit the tip of the iceberg that is the Austin hip hop scene. With plenty of DJs, producers, MCs, and rappers, Austin is poised to enter the global hip-hop market and become a dominating force within it. Being an artistpreneur and fellow Austin MC myself, it's been my pleasure to introduce you to Austin hip-hop and to show you why ATX got next.